Fossils Tell of Long Ago. This is an old book. You can tell it's not colored. It's all, well, it's a little, this is the coloring. Pretty much not a lot of color. Maybe I can get a little closer to you. Excuse me, still working on this teaching system. All right, by Aliki. Fossils tell of long ago. Once upon a time, a huge fish was swimming around when along came a smaller fish. The big fish was so hungry, it swallowed the other fish whole. The fish died and sank to the bottom of the lake. That, this happened 90 million years ago. How do we know? We know because the fish turned to stone. The fish became a fossil. A plant or an animal that has turned to stone is called a fossil. Scientists can tell how old stones are. They could tell how old the fish, the fish fossil is. So we know how long ago the fish lived. How did plants and animals become fossils? Most plants and animals do not become fossils when they die. They rot or they crumble, dry up, and blow away. No trace of them is left. This could have happened to the big fish. We would have never had known it had lived. Instead, the fish became a fossil, and this is how it happened. Dun da da da, be prepared, second years. You are writing a report about fossils. When the big fish died, it sank into the mud at the bottom of the lake. Slowly, the fish rotted. <clears throat> Only its bones were left. The bones of the fish it had eaten were left too. So you can see in this picture, there's another animal inside the animal. The skeleton of the fish lay buried and protected deep in the mud. Picture three. Thousands of years went by. More and more mud covered the fish. Tons and tons of mud piled up. After a long time, the surface of the earth changed. The lake in which the fish was buried dried out. It rained on the drying mud. Water seeped through the mud. Minerals from stones were dissolved in the water. The water seeped into all the tiny holes in the fish's bones. The minerals in the water were left behind in the fish bones. After a very long time, the minerals changed the bones to stone. The fish was a fossil. The mud around the bones became hard as rock too. How cool is that? Some fossils, <clears throat> like the fish, are bones or shells that have turned to stone. Sometimes a fossil is only an imprint of a plant or an animal. Millions of years ago, a fern grew in the forest. It fell and was buried in the swampy ground. The fern rotted away, but it left the mark of its shape in the mud. It left its imprint. The mud hardened. The mud with the imprint of the fern became a fossil called coal. Many fossils of plants and animals are found in coal. This is a dinosaur track. It was made in fresh mud 200 million years ago. Hot melted stone from a volcano filled the dino dinosaur's footprint in the mud. The stone cooked, I mean, I'm so sorry. The stone cooled and hardened. A few years ago, fossil hunters dug through the stone. They found an exact imprint of a dinosaur's foot. Not all fossils are found in stone. Some are found in the frozen ground of the Arctic. This ancient mammoth was a kind of elephant. It was frozen thousands of years ago. It was found not long ago, buried in the frozen ground. The grass it had been eating was still in its mouth. 
the mammoth was fresh enough to eat. Someone who ate a piece said it was dry and not very tasty, but what could you expect from an ancient mammoth? They ate it? <laughs> I wouldn't eat it. <laughs> you know about amber. Millions of years ago, a fly was caught in the sticky sap of a pine tree. The sap hardened and became a fossil called amber. Amber looks like yellow glass. The fly was perfectly preserved in the amber. Do you remember my amber bracelets in our classroom right now? And it has little pieces of amber. Ugh, classroom. Other insects and even plants have been preserved in amber. So they show a fern leaf, a spider, and a cucaracha cockroach. We have learned many things from fish, from the fish, the fern, the fly, and the dinosaur track. Fossils tell us about the past. Fossils tell us there once were forests, where now there are rivers. We find fossils of trees in the bottom of some riverbeds. Oh, here's a good picture from our timeline of lifers. Fossils tell us there once were seas where now there are mountains. Fossils of sea plants and animals have been found on mountains. So here they show coral, trilobite, that's gonna be your new favorite animal, bulimonite, ammonite, brachiopod, crinoids, I think crinoids are my favorite. Okay, we're gonna have to make two videos. You have to come back, I'm not done. I have more to tell you, but it's already eight minutes. Many lands that are cold today were once warm. We find fossils of tropical plants in very cold places. So here is a tropical plant. You might find it in the rainforest, and that's definitely not the rainforest. They've got their pickaxes for the snow. Fossils tell us about strange creatures that lived on Earth long ago. They tell us about dinosaurs, pteranodons, that's what the first years are reading about, and ichthy ichthyosaurus. No such creatures are alive today. They have died out. We say they are extinct. Some fossils found, are found by accident. Some are found by fossil hunters who dig for them. So this small print says, fossil hunters digging out the fossil of the big fish, Portheus, in Kansas. You too might find a fossil if you look hard. When you see a stone, look at it carefully. It may be a fossil of something that once lived. You may find a fossil at the seashore. You may find a fossil in the woods or by a newly dug road. You may find a fossil in the field or on a mountaintop. If you live in a city, you may find a fossil there too. Sometimes you can see them in the polished limestone walls of some buildings. 